everybody, it's Thomas here from thomaswithstarphotography.com. In this video, I'm going to look at making a HDR image uh, using Aurora HDR, but we're going to do things a little differently. So um, for a start, I'm starting off in Capture One rather than Lightroom. Now, there's a couple of ways to get the image from Capture One to Aurora, um, and I'm going to talk about why I use uh, these techniques. Um, in a little bit, but first uh, I just wanted to say if you're one of those people who thinks oh, I'm not interested in HDR and uh, I don't really like HDR There's actually some advantages to using it even if you're not creating a very kind of stylized image um, And I'm going to kind of go through that a bit in this so uh, even if it's not something that you're overly interested in um, Please give this a watch anyway, because I think you might find it interesting uh, And when you see the final result, um, I think you'd be impressed so what I'm going to be doing in this is I'm going to be using three different pieces of software. Um, I'm using Capture One, um, creating the HDR in Aurora HDR from MacFun. And finally, I am going to do some additional editing in MacFun's Luminar. And then we'll take the final image back into Capture One. Now, there's two ways I could go about doing this. I could actually just take the images and put them straight into Luminar. Um, by dragging and dropping them from Capture One. So if I select the three bracketed images here, like this, I can literally just drag and drop them into Aurora. Okay, when I do this, what it's doing is it's actually sending the raw files. Now I can go ahead and create the image, and I'm just going to do it just to show you why I'm not going to do it this way. So I'm going to turn on all these settings. I'm going to set this to low. The reason we... Uh, the reason I'm doing some ghosting is because there would be some movement in the C, so that's why I'm going to set that to low. Um, but And then the other settings, they're just kind of, because I'm using a raw file, they're important. So I'm just going to click Create HDR. Okay, so this is going to, this is going to go off and do its calculations, and this will take a minute. Okay, so it's finished processing and um, it's mapped the tone map to three images together and it's actually giving me a really nice result. Um, but the reason I don't want to use it is, as you can see, uh, there's a curve in the horizon here. Uh, the reason for that is because Aurora is using the raw files and it does not have any lens correction in it. Now these were taken on a Fuji X Pro 2 and I was using a 18 to 55 millimeter f 2.8 to 4 and that has some distortion in it normally most software such as Lightroom or Capture One actually corrects for this but unfortunately Aurora does not so because of that um, you've got this curve in the horizon now if I go and merge these I can work on it and um, I could try and get rid of it in Photoshop later but that's actually just it's too much trouble so I'm not going to do that instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to export the images from Capture One and I will create the HDR from the exported images rather than the raw files now, there are some disadvantages to that but there's also a good few advantages as well so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this Okay, and now I'm going to switch back to Capture One. Okay, so let me just go into the first of these images and I'm just going to deselect them. So you can see here that the horizon is perfectly straight and that's because Capture One is actually correcting for it already. So before I do anything else, I want to do just a, a few little bits of pre-production on this. Um, the most obvious of which is I want to straighten the horizon. So I'm going to go into the Straighten tool and draw out my ruler. Okay, and there we go, horizon is straight. Okay, and the second thing I want to do is I'm just going to double check all my sharpening settings. Um, I think these are fine. I, I'm using my defaults. Uh, if you have my Capture One guide, um, there's some of the presets that are, I've given with the newest version of that. Uh, okay, I'm happy with that. I'm not, I don't need to do anything else to it. So. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that all three of the images are the same. So I'm just going to press Command Shift C on the Mac or Control Shift C on the PC. And then I'm going to go to this next image, Control Shift V. And then the last one, Control Shift V. Okay, so now all those three of those images should have the same settings on them. Now the next thing we need to do is export them. So I'm going to select all three. Okay, so 
you might be thinking, why don't I just use the edit width option? Um, and if I was to click on this, I could select my settings and then go Aurora HDR. But there's a problem with the way Capture One sends files uh, to an external application. And if I go to use this, it will send them one at a time. So rather than Aurora trying to open three images, it will try to open three single images. Um, and that's not going to work, so we can't use that. So then best way to do it is we just need to save this to a temporary folder. So I can go export images. Variants. Okay, and I need to set all my settings. For format, I want to use PSD. Um, so everything there is sent. We set that to 16 bit. Now, the reason I'm using PSD and not TIFF is for some reason uh, Aurora does not like TIFF files from Capture One. Um, I'm not quite sure why. It might be something I'm doing. But let's just do this. So we're exporting our images. Okay, they're exported. So I'll switch over to Aurora, load images, select our three PSD files, click open. Okay, so now we need to set our settings. I don't really need to do alignment here because I shot these on a tripod, but there might be just some very slight variation, so I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and then I'm going to set this to low. I could try it without it, but I don't have to go through this again. So, Oh, and we don't need chromatic aberration removal because uh, this is already done by Capture One. So I'll click Create HDR. Okay, so it's loading images and it'll do its merging. So this just takes a minute. Okay, so now we've loaded the bracketed HDR image and uh, you can see what this looks like. So the first thing we can do is um, I can actually look at using some presets. So here are some of my own presets. So I can just apply these and see what they look like. Um, that's pretty dramatic, but uh, it might be a bit too much. Um, but I can just kind of go through some of these and see That's not too bad. Again, that's a bit dramatic. You can, of course, in any of these, just fade them out. So you can kind of go half and half. Let me just go back to the original here. I actually kind of like this one. Um, it's possibly a little dramatic, but uh, yeah, let's use this as our basis. So uh, um, we have a layer here, and this is basically everything from the preset that I've applied to it. Um, so I'm just going to zoom in and just double check everything here. What I'm looking for is I want to make sure there's no kind of nasty halos around stuff that you can sometimes get with HDR images. But everything looks okay. Uh, now, the only thing I don't like is the highlights are a bit much. And I don't want so much of a vignette. In fact, I'm going to turn that vignette off. Okay. That's pretty cool. Um... Are we getting halos? So I just need to let this process at one to one first. That's not too bad. I think this is okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, some of the sky is getting a bit over the top here, so I'm going to fix that. So I'm going to add another layer, another layer, and we want an adjustment layer. And let me just see if I bring down highlights ever so slightly in the sky, I think that's a bit better. 
So the next thing I want to do is I want to add a mask to that. So make sure the layer is selected and switch over to the mask tool. Then we want to go to gradient. And then we just drag this up. Okay, and then I can just check. Yeah, so I'm not doing too much here, I just... Yeah, I think that's okay. We don't need to do any more to that. And... Let's see. I could try and bring out some more of the detail down here in the rocks. Um, but we might actually do that in Luminar, which is our next step. Now, the other thing I want to check is just to make sure the water here isn't any kind of weird stuff going on here. I think that's okay. There's some slight alignment issues, but... Uh, Yeah, no, we don't need to do anything about that. Okay, so let me just let this finish calculating. Okay, so overall this is pretty good as is, but I'm going to just see if I can do a bit more to it. Uh, now, first thing I want to do is save it. So I'm going to go save as. And I'm going to just save it in the same folder as we had. Hit save. Um, the reason I'm doing this is just in case we it crashes or we lose something. Um, I want to make sure we still have it. Okay, so the next thing I want to do now is send this to Luminar. So if you look up here, you see this little button, the L button. So it's export to Luminar. So I just hit that. Okay, so the image is loaded into Luminar now. And uh, let's just see what we can do. So I'm just going to switch to the quick and awesome workspace. So we'll start with this. And I'm going to use the new AI filter, which is really cool. Um, it's kind of magic. <laughs> so I want to see what this can do. Now, the one thing I'll say with this filter is it's pretty good up to about 50%. But once you go above that, it's way too over the top. So we're going to keep it fairly low. Now, the only thing is I don't want to overdo it so I'm just going to see it's a little better but it's a bit dramatic in the sky I do like the overall tone of it um, so what we can do is we can actually just fade this back slightly okay now I'm going to add another layer. So I'm going to do adjustment layer. And for this layer, I'm going to kind of see if I can enhance the rocks a bit. So we'll bring up details enhancer and we'll just add some details in here. Again, I want to be careful not to go too far because I don't want to make this look ridiculous. Let's just see, before, after, that's not too bad. I'm going to add dramatic as well. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to mask that to just the rocks. So click on the mask button here and set this to 100%. Increase the size of my brush. Okay, and we're just going to paint it on. So when you're painting in this, you kind of need to just start it first to get the layer right. And it was 100%. And then just paint over here. Okay. So now we've just limited that to the foreground into the rock. So if we can turn that on and off again. As you can see, I'm not doing a lot to this. Uh, I don't want to do too much to it, um, but it just gives you a little bit of an extra boost there. 
and see we can add I'm just gonna go with tone and we can just increase because I just want to bring it up ever so slightly because it's a nice foreground interest so we just want to see what we can do here again but I don't want to affect the tone of it too much but that's not bad um let me just check again before and after okay so again we're going for just a, a slight little bit okay and let's just see if we can bring up the color a bit the color contrast function of this is quite handy as well it brings up colors quite nicely and uh, we don't want to go too far. And it's just a bit of an enhancement. Okay, so next I want to do a few more kind of overall things to it. So I go add new adjustment layer. And in this case we're going to go with Orton effect. So this is kind of like a nice overall glow. Again, with all the things I'm doing here, I'm just doing very small amounts, and it may seem kind of subtle, but overall, you can see it's not. I'm not doing a huge amount of it, but it's just, it's just enhancing it that slight little bit to make it more interesting. So again, before, after, and I might add a little bit of a vignette to this as well. And We don't want to do too much because Okay, that's not bad. Okay, again before after. I'm trying to think is there anything else I want to do to this? No, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I think this is okay. We'll we'll go with this. Um, so, as I mentioned at the start, sometimes HDR gets a bad name, but I don't think this is too much like a near kind of stereotypical HDR. But what it does do when you combine multiple exposures and you use tone mapping, you're actually able to bring out things that you wouldn't normally see. So, like, for example, the color in this, the color in the rocks here. And this isn't fake it's it's actually it's you're just enhancing it and bringing it out um because when you combine the images you're getting that all that extra data so it just lets you use that a bit more um so yeah um, i'm gonna try one more thing to this <laughs> of course sometimes you need to leave learn to leave at home but there's no harm in experimenting so i'm going to See, I'm wondering is the whole image a bit too bright? Because this was at sunset after all, so I'm gonna take it down just a smidge. So again. Just a bit more contrast. So if again if I look at before, after. I actually think that's a bit better. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this overall. Um, if we go back and look at the original in Capture One, you can see it's quite a distance from that to that. So, so that just again shows you the power of HDR, even if you're not going for a traditional HDR look the kind of over-the-top processed look you're still able to bring out a lot of detail with it so there are advantages to doing it um okay so the last thing i want to do is just save this and get it back into capture one which is actually trickier than it sounds so first thing i want to do is save it um now in luminar you can save it as its own format and again i'm going to do that so we keep all the non-destructiveness intact so i'm going to go in here and just save it in here and make sure we have save history to document click save I 
Okay, so what this is doing is it's saving it in the Luminar format, um, and then the next thing I need to do is save it out back into a format that we can use. So I go in here, and I go export to image, and again, we're saving it in the same spot. We're using TIFF. I'll save it at WRGP 16 bits. Again, we want to preserve as much as possible. And we're going to call this final. Okay, and hit save. Okay, so now to get it back into Capture One. Let me find Capture One. Now again, there's a couple of ways we can do this. Let me just switch back to the grid view here. If I can remember how to do that. Okay, so... What we need to do is find our folder. Now, this is actually in the catalog. Um, it's not in a separate folder, so this is why this gets a bit tricky. See, the problem is when you go to import images, it brings up the import window, which sometimes you just want to import one image. This is a bit much. So I'm just going to cancel that for a second. And I'm going to go back here. And if we drag and drop this in here, you still get the capture window. But however, it goes straight to it and uh, we don't need to do anything else to it. So I'm going to import one image. Okay. And now it's back into capture one. Okay, so there we are, Luminar. And back in Capture One. So now we can do kind of our finishing touches to it. So I could set my export settings. So if I want to export it for the web, or I can add my metadata and everything else to it. Um, so if I wanted to, for example, I could add my metadata to it. I can go over here and give it a description and so on. So I could say. She, sunset so um, in case you're wondering this was actually uh, Galway Bay um, and this is the beach at Salt Hill and this was at sunset on the summer solstice on June 21st um, it was a bit cloudy so we didn't actually get to see the sunset but we still got a nice image out of it uh, and I'm pretty happy with that so yeah so that's pretty much it um, if I wanted to now I can export this for the web so I have all my settings here um, that's why you're seeing my signature down here is because I actually have this I'm actually selected on this one which I have set up for the web with my watermark and everything on it so if I actually just select here you'll see signature disappears uh, but anyway that's beside the point um, so yeah so that's how you create a HDR image from start to finish using Capture One, Aurora HDR, Luminar and then back to Capture One so I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope you found it useful and um, if you want to see more videos like this um, I have a new members only subscription service uh, using Patreon which starts at a very reasonable $2 a month um, moving up to $5 and $10 and there's going to be lots of exclusive content including more videos like this um, and on the top tier uh, I also go I'm also posting some raw files so you can try your own versions of these these kind of techniques um, so yeah so if you want to help support my uh, website my tutorials and my videos um, then consider signing up for patreon uh, other than that um, please like this video on youtube and subscribe to my channel and if you want to see more uh, i have my website my blog and everything and all the links will be in the description below and thanks again for watching okay see you next time